Hi everybody, I'm Rob Raybon, and on today's video we're going to talk about the biggest box that I've ever purchased. This is my brand new used 2000 Ford Econoline E350. something new jersey i just bought this heap service engine lights on i don't know what that's about airbag lights on whatever i don't think the stereo works got 243,000 miles but diesel try to make it home hopefully what a shitty day to buy a van all the way out in jersey just realized the speedometer doesn't work when i go above 40 so i have no idea how fast i'm going Pretty sure I'm only doing around 40, but the speed limit's 50. And I don't want to break the speed limit, but I don't know. I don't know how fast I'm going. And it's raining and I got the windows down because the AC doesn't work. What a piece of crap. Why did I do this? What the hell part of Jersey is this? Look in the mountains. A little picturesque and beautiful. There's no snookies. There's no situations. Here it is. Biggest box that I've ever purchased. Let's check out the inside of this thing. This key has a weird little notch in it. I don't know if that's for opening beer bottles or something. I haven't tried that yet. It'd be pretty convenient if it was. What the f is that? A frog? So there's some sort of animal living in the fender already. I don't know where it went. So you can see this thing is really filthy. Armrest is dirty. You can barely see the instrument cluster. And then the seats, they have a couple tears in them. That should be expected. This thing's a 2000, so it's 20 years old. But the shirt seat cover, I don't know what the hell that's about. I don't know who would use a shirt for a seat cover, but uh, that's pretty disgusting. The other seat cover's all ripped up and everything too. Then came with a bunch of trash and garbage, small gloves. That liquor store receipt's actually mine. Old fire extinguisher, some old mask, old Sprite bottle. And then, I guess you'd call that a dog box. It's got that all taped up because I guess it was bleeding in too much heat. Center console had a bunch of money in it and some screws. Still gotta count that money. That means I paid a little bit less. And this gum was actually mine and the, uh, that granola bar is actually mine too. It's a little sugar snack. And there's like, I don't know if those are caps for chapstick or something, I don't know. Nobody seems to clean out their damn cars anymore when they sell them. They just leave their deodorant and their water bottles and everything laying around. It seems to be a common theme with the last couple of boxes I've bought. So this is a work van, so it does have the rear cage area. Didn't have the key for the lock. So I think I actually got to take that lock apart and uh, remove that. I might remove the whole cage. I don't know yet. Depends how much we try to make this thing into a camper van. Also came with some, some tie downs. And it's an old hat. Ew. I should really wear gloves. It's one of the first issues with this van is that the hinge is just kind of like popping. That lower hinge. I guess it's missing a nut or a bolt or the stud broke off. I don't know. Maybe we'll just put a little weld there. I really want to see what the hell was climbing around back there. It's definitely a frog or a mouse. It also came with this big ass piece of wood that was kind of like a tool rack for the guy. Took that thing out because it was taking up some room. Put these nice like padlock things on it in case you really want to lock this thing up. Then the rear of the van is all diamond plate. I'm not sure why it's all diamond plate. I'm guessing underneath is all rusted out. I have no idea. I guess it's kind of nice to have diamond plate. It'll be kind of rugged. He left some other tools here and there. Some gloves stashed in there. That jack probably doesn't work. Maybe. Maybe not. Just like rust here and there. I don't know if there's any dome lights. I guess there's a dome light right there. Dr. Produce sticker. I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, just a, a basic bare bones van. You see some surface rust on the doors. It's 
some surface rust on a rocker over here. Not sure how much of this van is Bondo. Probably all of it. Let's see if this thing starts. Yeah. One thing I did buy for this immediately was an Edge Insight CTS3. Probably gonna do a full review on this. I bought this because the speedometer on the van only goes up to 40 and then stops working. Seems to be a pretty common thing with the Econa lines, and the only way to fix it is to replace the whole instrument cluster. So instead of doing that, we just bought one of these for $3.99. Bought this off Amazon, got it pretty quick, and that solved my speedometer issues. So now I can read engine speed boost and all that stuff. So that's the first mod for this box already. So when I bought it, the airbag light was actually on and also it had a service engine light which I thought was just like an oil change light but apparently it's the check engine light on these vans it'll say service engine I think it's that way on all the power strokes I really didn't know and I uh, really should have researched that because now I don't know what the hell the problem is the insight will check for codes but when I tried to read that code it didn't come up with anything and when I tried to clear it it wouldn't clear it out so I have no idea what that is I might have to go to a diesel specialist it might just be a glow plug or something so this van has 244,146 miles that's not much for a power stroke these things seem to last for a really long time my friend Paul has one in a uh, OBS and that thing has like 400,000 miles on it and uh, it's still kicking it still tows his trucks everywhere with it it also came with a pretty decent stereo and actually sounds pretty nice so I got that going for me. It has Bluetooth and I can play all my podcasts through my phone. And also, most importantly, especially with it being August in Maryland, this does have AC. It did need a charge and I threw like six cans in here, but it wound up holding and uh, I have AC now. I don't even have that on my Volvo. The center console kind of sucks. It's a little different than the one in my work van. I guess this was his fire extinguisher holder. It's just got drywall screws holding this thing on. I'm not sure what the hell he really used it for, honestly. And it's really dirty. I really got to clean this thing up, and I definitely got to get some damn seat covers. The seats are just filthy. There's no real glove box over there. There's just an airbag and, like, a dummy space for where a glove box would be on, like, a regular, like, family van. You can get two cigarette lighters so you can charge stuff. But uh, let's go for a quick drive. We'll talk about why the hell I even bought this thing. And I'll tell you my thoughts on this. And if I made a mistake or not. I don't make mistakes. In life, you make decisions and you don't look back. So pretty much ever since I sold my Datsun 620, I've been looking for a vehicle to tow with. I was going to buy my buddy Jeremy's dad's F350 OBS style. Really cool, but it's a crew cab long bed dually. That thing was like 50 feet long. So I wasn't sure if I'd be able to park it anywhere. So I had this idea to get a van. I knew that Ford was making diesel vans for a while. And I really wanted the 7.3. I know the 6.0s are junk, and even some of the newer model diesels are junk. But the 7.3 seemed to be pretty bulletproof. It's not the fastest motor, but I can't afford a Cummins. And even some of the Dora Maxes are expensive. So Power Stroke seemed like a really good fit. I don't expect this to be a race van or anything. I already got fast cars. I just want this to tow. So because it's a van, I can lock all my stuff up in the back and go to a weekend long event if I want to. Have all my tires, all my tools, all my camera gear, and everything will be secure. And I can even sleep in the back if I want to. I live in a van down by the river. I couldn't really do that with a truck. Even a crew cab it gets a little cramped in the back. You can't really put a bed back there or anything. So once I made my mind up to get a van, I'd been looking for one for a while. Around the time that they started shutting everything down for COVID, I had the money, and there was a really nice one up in Philly with like 120,000 miles on it. But I think that guy got scared when I said that I was flying for work and he never responded to my Facebook messages. So that one fell through. And then I was broke for a long time and there was a bunch of other vans that fell through just because I didn't have the money. My unemployment got screwed up and my job got shut down and COVID has cost me a lot of money. But eventually some of that stuff got sorted out and I did save up a little bit of money. So I saw this one on Facebook Marketplace. The guy said there was no rust, said all the tires were new and the batteries were new. And all that was a lie. That was a Lie. There isn't much visible rust because it's all been covered up with Bondo and the front tires need to be swapped out because they're a little bald and I think this thing needs an alignment. But it does run and drive and it's a really solid foundation for a good tow vehicle. So I had to drive three hours to get this thing. They're getting really hard to find and I knew that if I didn't get it Amanda was going to be mad that I made her drive me three hours to go look at something and then we just turned around. Like I said it's solid. It has a decent stereo. The AC works. 
the seats are filthy, the whole thing's filthy. But once this thing gets cleaned up and I work out a couple of the little bugs, I think this is gonna be a really nice road trip vehicle and a really good tow pig. So I've done three cross country road trips and I noticed that there's a lot of rest stops across the country. And then when you get out west on Pacific Coastal Highway, you can sleep right on the beach pretty much. You just park a van, hang out, sleep. You can wake up in the back of your van and go right to the beach and enjoy your day. You can keep going up the coastline. Can't really do that on the east coast, which sucks. But being that I have a van, I can go out there and do that if I want to. So for the future, I really think that we're going to do that. Everybody out west does it with Volkswagens usually or old Ford Econ lines. Some people use RVs. But why not a diesel van? This thing gets pretty decent fuel economy with it being a diesel. Not sure what kind of fuel economy I'm getting right now because uh, for some reason that didn't work on the Edge Insight. I need to look into that a little bit more. And I haven't filled this tank because this is a big ass tank. But being that this thing's economical and good for the environment, I figured I would call this thing Greta. Like Greta Van Fleet, but more just Greta Van. A lot of people call their diesel vans Van Diesel, like Vin Diesel, which I thought was clever too, until I realized that there's like 40 Van Diesels. Also know a lot of YouTubers get these vans because they do come in handy for a lot. Being that you can travel with it and take all your buddies and tow your drift car or whatever. I know Haggard Garage had one with a big front mount and a big turbo. Oh man, that's a while. sick. That thing was pretty badass. I didn't even really know much about that until I started researching vans and then found their build. I think they gave theirs away actually. I think it ran like a 15 second quarter mile or 14 second. Not sure, but it was pretty quick for a van. These things aren't lightweight. Now that I have something I can tow with, I really need to get a trailer. So if anybody has a really crappy trailer that they want to rip me off on, let me know in the comments or email me, because I am in the market for one soon. So these one-ton vans can tow up to 10,000 pounds, and with it being a diesel, it should still get pretty decent fuel economy. I read online that some people are getting like 15 miles to the gallon while towing a trailer. Some people are getting better, some people are getting worse. It's really hard to believe what anybody says on the internet these days. People just say whatever, really, and uh, usually people just believe it. Because this shitbox has a stereo and a working air conditioner, I am thinking about getting rid of my Volvo wagon. I'm not completely 100% decided on that, but the Volvo doesn't have air conditioning, it doesn't have a stereo, the heat barely works. I know diesels are a little funky in the winter, you gotta let them warm up for a while, so I'm not sure if I want to use this for a full-time daily or not. It is a lot bigger than the Volvo wagon. But I feel like the wagon's getting terrible fuel economy anyway, so maybe I'll just replace that with this. I really do need to thin out the fleet a little bit, and I can fit way more stuff in the back of this. And there's no windows, so nobody can tell what camera equipment I have in the back. With the Volvo wagon, it's all windows, and there's just a really small trunk area. If I have a camera bag with me, I usually take it in whatever restaurant or bar or store that I'm going into because I don't want anybody to steal my camera equipment. With this van not having any windows and having the whole security gate situation, I can throw my camera equipment in the back and I can feel pretty confident that it's not gonna get stolen unless somebody has a big cutting wheel. I guess they could cut through the door. But if you're gonna go through all that, just buy a goddamn camera. Don't steal mine. But overall, I'm really happy with this thing. I did get them down on price a little bit. These are getting harder to find. They're getting a bit expensive, especially if you find the 4x4 Quigley version. I saw one of those for $20,000, and it still had 200 and some thousand miles on it. It was completely kitted out for 4x4 use, but still $20,000 for a diesel van. A little crazy. One of my favorite parts of the Edge Insight is that you can do a performance test. You can do a quarter mile test, an eighth mile test, a zero to 60 test. So we can see just how slow this thing is. You start from a stop, and then as soon as you take off, like a big van would. If anybody's interested in me doing a full review on this thing, just let me know and uh, maybe I'll do a whole review on that. Thing's pretty cool. Seems like it's pretty much a necessity if you have a diesel truck. So maybe I will do a nice review. So, um...
If I wanted to change anything on this besides the interior being completely and totally filthy and needing to be cleaned out, I think I might try to change this center console setup, maybe put something here, but then that blocks the way to the back. And uh, I just think I want to keep that open in case I want to like be able to crawl back and forth for like fast getaways. So maybe I'll uh, maybe I won't block this. Maybe I'll try to do something else with this whole center console setup. I like that it has two cigarette lighters. That means I can charge more camera batteries and everything. So if I can put some sort of little shelf here to stash cameras and drones and all that stuff, that would be pretty neat. Really want this to be pretty utilitarian and. I get to a lot of events with camera stuff, so I want my cameras to be able to charge and everything. Other than that, and cleaning up, like, I think there's a match stick here. It's just filthy. Maybe I'll do something with the color. Maybe I'll do some sort of plastic dip. I haven't plastic dipped anything in a while. I don't think I'll splatter art this or anything. Because it's black on the bottom and silver up top, maybe I'll do like an A-team thing. That'd be pretty nifty maybe. The other thing I really don't like about this van is the wheels. These are the same hubcaps that are on my work van. It does make it convenient if I want to steal tires off of the work van. The company would probably never even notice. Not that I would ever do that. And the screws about to pop out and flatten the front tire. So yeah, other than that, cosmetically I don't think I'll do anything. Oh, there's like a bike lock just hanging out. Um, okay. I guess the bike lock was to keep the extension cord and the block heater. I don't know. Cosmetically, it's kind of cool looking for a van. I don't mind the way it looks. I don't expect it to look like a Maserati or anything. Maybe I'll change these to LEDs at some point. The company that made the LEDs that I have on the Fox actually makes blocks for an Econoline. Maybe I'll look at doing that too. Get a little more output. More trash. All kinds of trash under the seats. All kinds of mask. This thing's definitely got COVID in it somewhere. Probably just want to hire somebody to clean this out. Maybe Amanda will do it. Some other odds and ends back here. Some aluminum. It's a windshield wiper. A little bit of copper piping. Probably somebody's crack pipe. Some old dirty clubs. So thanks for watching the video. Please like and please subscribe. It's probably going to be some more van stuff. Maybe a video here or there. I am thinking about getting a tuner for this. I don't know. I know I can tune through the edge in sight, but I think I might get one of those six position tuners. They're like 200 bucks. They're really easy to install and supposed to add like 140 horsepower or something. But anyway, please like and please subscribe and uh, wash your hands and have a fantastic day. Um, for some reason the gas pedal's not working right now. Don't know what that was about.